Hey there, I'm Sandra from Italy. Please like and subscribe. I live in Rome, but I couldn't see anything of this beautiful city for years. Ever since my dad ran away when I was only eight years old, my mom locked me up in my room for like no reason. You should have been home two minutes ago, young lady. Your bracelet doesn't match your school uniform. I told you to brush your teeth in circles. Phew. She never told me why dad went away or where he was, not even if he was still alive. But I can tell she loved him very much. Maybe she locked me away because I reminded her of him. I don't know. She barely looked at me when having breakfast in the morning, and when I came home from school, she immediately found a reason to send me up to my room. And stay there. I began to blame myself for dad's absence and mom's bad mood. Maybe I made so many mistakes in the past that he couldn't take it anymore and he just ran away from us. I was so insecure that I didn't talk to anyone in school. And when somebody talked to me, hey, what's up? It took me so long to think about the right answer that people thought I was mocking them and eventually stopped talking to me at all. My mom didn't have to send me up to my room anymore. I went there all by myself and stayed there the whole day. Maybe mom was disappointed, but now she just dropped breakfast on the floor in front of my room and disappeared into her own room to work at the computer. I never felt so sad in my life until one day I spilled my tea on my bed and took away the mattress to blow dry it. What's this? It was a poem, and my dad wrote it for me. I just couldn't believe it. The poem was quite sad, but I felt happier than I ever had before. I danced through my room and read it over and over again until I knew it by heart. Only when I bumped into the mattress, stumbled over the teacup and fell, I realized I was gonna be totally late for school. So many mistakes, again. No, 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 I'm sorry, dad. I panicked, grabbed my bag and ran out of the house to catch the next bus. With my head hanging down, I got on the bus, which obviously was empty because everyone was in school already. I just slumped down on the seat, mumbling to myself. I was startled when I heard someone play a cool jazz tune on the saxophone. I turned around and found that the bus actually wasn't empty. On the last seat in the back was a girl, maybe two years older than me. She had sliced and slashed her school uniform into a punk outfit, just lounged around in the bus like she was home and played her saxophone, all while being late. Awesome. I just couldn't take my eyes off her. Then she looked at me and stopped playing. What's up, sis? Why did you stop, miss? The girl smiled. I couldn't believe what I just said. Did I just rhyme on the fly? Did I inherit this skill from my dad? I guess I wanted to appear cool to her, but I immediately turned red like a tomato. But she just <laughs> laughed it off and told me how funky I was. Nobody ever told me something nice like that. I'm Romana, by the way. Just call me Rome. How cool is this? <laughs> I was just blown away. By the time we had to get off the bus, we had already become friends. She was such a great inspiration. I even cut my hair and changed my look, and my confidence increased a lot. I started to set the clock so I would be awake before my mom. I prepared my own breakfast and just left a note on the table before leaving. Don't you worry, I'll be back in a hurry. I don't know if mom was happy to finally see me grow up a little. I don't know if she was able to be happy at all. But from then on, she stopped blaming me for everything and sending me to my room. She even looked at me from time to time. She never smiled, but I didn't care because I had a new friend, a new look, and people in school started talking to me again. You, um, changed a lot. And it's not even all I got. Do you know who that was? I guess a boy without any flaws. Well, um, you see, Miss Rossi, I found a poem in my bed and when I read it, my mattress was like, attacked me and... I was only feeling comfortable talking to people when rhyming. It was my only skill, and I desperately wanted to avoid being a nobody again. I didn't even realize I scared off the most popular boy in school, Valentino. When did the Roman Empire end? In 476, it was totally spent. I just couldn't let it go. Two weeks passed, and people stopped talking to me again because it was impossible to have a normal conversation with me. And when I tried talking to others, hey, what's up in the cup? They just ignored me. And there I was, back in my room, being a nobody again. And I really didn't like mom's sad, I knew it all along face. I watched some MSA videos on my phone and didn't hear the doorbell ringing. Sandra, Sandra. When I rushed down to open the door, I was very happy to see Rome, the only person I could talk to in a normal way. And don't you dare play that horrible instrument in here. She came to ask me what was wrong, so I told her about the poem and about my dad I knew so little about. You gotta confront your mom, sis. Ain't no other way. Well, you just met her. Listen, if I had a mom, I'd talk the living daylights out of her. I was shocked and asked her what she meant by this. 
Rome told me she was raised in an orphanage and never knew her parents. She told me that she was even bullied for being sad, that she got used to being all alone, and all she had was the jazz music coming out of the nurse's room, who didn't care about the orphans. Now she's living with an elite foster family who never approved of her playing the saxophone and doesn't treat her like a daughter at all. Wanna know why I play the sax all day? I was so sad, I couldn't even nod and just looked at her with tears in my eyes because it's my only friend, and it tells me beautiful stories. But you got me now, Rome. Gotta go, sis. Just talk to your mom, okay? Now Rome had tears in her eyes, too. She stood up and left my room. Before she left the house, she used her saxophone to wake up my mom, who had fallen asleep in front of her computer. Mom was furious and stormed into my room, thinking Rome was still there. Didn't I tell you to- Where's that crazy girl? I mustered all my courage, handed her dad's poem, and asked her to tell me everything she knew. She read the poem, looked at me with a stern face, then told me to come down to the living room with her and made me sit on the sofa. She went to the basement and came back up with a huge box in her hands. Without saying a word, she dropped several thousand letters on the floor and looked down at them with her arms crossed and her lips pressed together. My dad wrote a letter every day for seven years and not one of them was opened. I took them to my room and opened them all. Reading them took me four days straight without any sleep. My mom didn't even make me try to go to school. The letters were full of beautiful poems, dried flowers for mom, and cute little drawings for me. He wrote how much he missed me, asked my mom to let him come back, and apologized for running away. But none of the letters mentioned the reason why he ran away. My head was spinning when I finished. Where are you, Dad? I had to ask my mom, and I felt so bad for Rome. I didn't call her the whole time. But before I could even grab my phone, I fell asleep. The wonderful smell of fresh blueberry muffins woke me up in the afternoon the next day. Rome was sitting on the edge of my bed, holding them under my nose like smelling salt. I am so glad you're alive, sis. Rome told me my mom had let her in to make sure I was all right during the last four days, but I wouldn't even notice her peeking into my room. I hugged Rome tight before gobbling up three muffins in two seconds. You should consider taking a shower. You know, now that the muffins were gone, I realized they smelled a lot better than I did. Suddenly, my mom stepped into the room. You should consider taking a shower, you know. It was just impossible to keep myself together. I leapt up and grabbed my mom by the shoulders. For the first time in years, my mom embraced me and didn't let go until I calmed down. She did love me. Where is dad? Why didn't you open the letters? Why didn't you show them to me? Why didn't you let him come back? I gotta go practice, ladies. When Rome had left, Mom told me that Dad always dreamt about being a successful poet. He used to read his poems to her before they went to sleep, and Mom loved it. But his dream never became a reality, and we were slowly running out of all the money we had saved. So, I told him to stop writing and get a job or care for you so I could get a job. But he just said everything was going to be all right and kept on writing. Until my mom threw him out and got a home office job to pay the bills. She was sending me to my room not because she hated me, but because she wanted to get her work done to earn the money we needed to keep our little house. He hasn't sent a letter for almost half a year now. I didn't know what to think of my dad anymore, but I loved his poems and just had to see him. All his letters had his address on the back. To my surprise, Mom agreed to go see him. We went to an old apartment building and took a deep breath before knocking on his door, but nobody answered. When we knocked a second time, an old lady opened the door. She told us that she had moved in a few months ago and knew nothing of my dad. I was devastated, and when I saw Mom's sad, I knew it all along face again, I was furious. I ran home and locked myself up in my room. When I was right in the middle of crying my heart out, a message from Rome arrived on my phone. Got a surprise for you, sis. Make sure to be taking that shower. I showered for ages as if I was trying to wash off all the sorrow I felt. After that, I met Rome in the park. She just had to take one look at me to know that I didn't see my dad. Instead of greeting her, I just sat down on a bench and stared at the ground. You can come out now. From behind a large tree, Valentino suddenly emerged carrying a book in his hands. He walked up and stood right next to Rome. I thought they were together now, so I couldn't think of anything better than congratulations and looked down at the ground again. Don't be silly, sis. I don't date younger boys, duh, but we are kind of together. I didn't understand what was going on, but it did sound interesting. We formed a hip-hop trio. You know there's only two of you, right? And you will be the singer. Did you know that Pretty Boy here is a great drummer? 
This was all too much. I didn't know what to say. I just lost my dad forever. My confidence was crushed once again, and now I should become an artist? A rapper? Performing on stage? Life's too short to hide away, sis. But we need to know if you still got it. When Valentino opened the book, I realized it was that new bestseller we were supposed to read for school until tomorrow. A book I forgot to even get because I was too busy reading poems and going through all the emotions in the world. I'll read something, and you'll rhyme on it. There was no rhyming challenge that could ever put me on the spot. So I stood up from the bench, took on a battle pose, and commanded Valentino to begin. Fixed by occluded revelation, but freed from the flow of speculation. Wow, did I say that? Reading all my dad's poems must have made me even better. Yeah! Rome and Valentino were super excited and both hugged me tightly. While Rome laughed, Valentino blushed a little and tried to cover it up by giving me the book along with the summary he wrote. As I took it and our hands touched, it was my time to blush, <laughs> which made Rome laugh even harder. Things went kind of smoothly after that. Valentino, Rome, and I became very close. Every day in the afternoon, we would meet in the band room of the school to practice our show. I still miss Dad, but my friends and the music helped me to get over it. And I thought, if he stopped caring about me and Mom, he just doesn't deserve us. When the school year was nearly over, it was finally time for the concert. My knees were shaking when we stepped onto the stage to perform open air for the whole school. Time to shine, sis. Got your back with my beat, Sandra. You'll do great. I looked for my mom and found her right in front of the stage, like a real fan. She looked back at me, arched her eyebrows, and pointed to the man standing next to her. My heart skipped a beat. It was Dad. He must have kept an eye on me the whole time. Our show was a great success, and the freestyle encore blew everyone away. It turned out that my dad was the author of this best-selling book we had to read for school. He published it under a pseudonym so he could have a quiet life with us. After the concert, he showed me and mom his beautiful new house in the countryside. When he offered us to live with him again, my mom put her arm around my shoulders and finally smiled. We'll think about it. Mom! Well, she knew she couldn't do this to me. And when dad showed her the home office room he already arranged for her with all the latest technology stuff in it, she just played hard to get for a second and then happily agreed. Valentino and I helped each other out in school and eventually became a couple. It was Rome's final year, but our band still exists. We still couldn't decide on a name for it, though. When Rome's stunning performance even made it to the local news, her foster parents threw her out because it finally became clear to them she'd never be a doctor or a lawyer. As Rome didn't know where to go, I asked Mom if she could live with us. Living with a runaway husband and two crazy girls? Glad I have my own room. I forced us all into a big hug, saxophone included. And that was my story. Thanks for watching. Ciao from Sandra.